Why can't people just be normal? <laughs> Says the craziest person in Australia. I mean like free to speak their mind and their truth and you know be logical about different things. For instance I'm just dropping off some um, things to Zane at school and the school won't let me in. They won't call him and that's that. Not much we can do. Which actually, that's not true. You could do a lot. You could grab the things and give it to his teacher so that when he comes back into class, he can get it that way. You could put it in this class. You could put it in his locker. You could call him to the office. You could allow me to go into the school. Actually, there's a billion things that you could do to help, but you don't want to help. <laughs> People hide behind that's just my job, and that's just our policy. There's not much, um, I don't know, I'm, I, I'm comparing this to all sorts of things, as you know, like I'm not, it's not just this incident, this is nothing. Zane will get over it, I'm sure, he won't hold it against me, especially because I tried. There are a lot of things that people can't do, and it's also bullshit that they can't do it. Even my sister, she got, um, kind of a reprimander yesterday at work from walking, walking 300 metres on the floor. Not allowed to walk 300 metres on the floor. You've got to um, find somebody with a walkie-talkie and then communicate with someone on the other end of the floor. She's like, well, I see the person that I want to communicate with 300 metres down there. So I walked up to him. She has a logical brain as well. The person with the walkie-talkie is not anywhere to be seen. The person she wants to communicate with is within view. And um, people get so caught up in their rules without even... I remember working for a um, company where... The, it's an electronic company, everything was done electronically. But we had that much paperwork um, for every new customer that signed up, either online or over the phone we would fill out a new customer form in pencil, pen. And then we would take that form and we'd type it into the system. So double thing. And then we'd put that piece of paper into a file, which is fine because if they had personally, personally wrote all their details on this form and signed something, then you've got uh, the paper copy of that. And I think that's fine. If we're the ones signing them up and we fill out the form and everything. Anyway, it was double handling and it was the first few weeks of working anywhere. You just do what you're told because, you know, you're just trying to learn everything you can and they tell you things and you're just trying to follow it their way. And then you go, wait a second, you know, this would be better if this, but they're not thinking that. Why are we double handling? Why are we spending an hour instead of 20 minutes? Why are we spending an hour instead of five minutes? So... Uh, I remember the words coming out of their mouth. Well, that's just how we've always done it. And that was like at the start. And then when I'm querying, when I had a little bit more confidence in the job and I've been there a while and I'm like, okay, why do we do this? Oh, that's just the way that we've always done it. And um, then they realized all this double handling when they started not having enough funds and they had to let go of staff and everything. And they said, now they're looking at, okay, where can they save time? because they're paying us quite a lot of money, that was the most well-paid job that I had, to waste time with this double handling stuff when we could have been doing more urgent things. Uh, because there was a lot of important things to do in that job, but that one was not one of them. That was how they got their money, but it wasn't an important thing as far as the critical um, things that we had in the nature of the job. And it just it goes to show that people, even even at our work, there's so many things that we can't we don't have um, power over, but there is so much that we could be doing to help people. And where I feel like if we can help them, let's help them. And I love all the, the minds that think the same. And then you've got the ones that every single phone call, they say, nah, sorry, we don't have it. If someone asks them to check something out the back, they go, nah, it's just what we've got on the floor. They don't take the, the initiative or even the care or even the desire to want to help anyone. Whereas when, when I see uh, any kind of role that I'm in in a job where it's um, like customer-based, I see every customer as like my mum. 
you know what I mean, a family member. So if if a customer comes to me for help, I'm helping them like they're my mum, not like they're just another nobody, you know. And I think it's the difference in, in taking the care to acknowledge people for um, have a care about, you know, trying to help people. And the only times that I haven't been like that is when I've been like depressed and angry with the world and I just didn't care. And I, th I feel like they're related, you know, like when, when you don't care for yourself, you don't care for others. And I also even looking at, um, you know, definition of love, you know, people's like, oh, but I love them. I love them. I love them. And I'm like, what is love? Like define love because you've got completely different versions of love out here. I define love as, you know, wanting the best for another. You love them by wanting the best for them. So I want the best for everybody. Um, not the best as in the best mansion, you know, the best as in their, their happiness and fulfillment and free to be who they want to be and free to be confident in themselves and happy, free to be true to who they are, not suppressed and, and forced and controlled or anything like that. So my definition of love is wanting the best for another. My definition of love for another is wanting the best for them. So when I love the nephews, I just want the best for them. Yeah, I don't know. Like I just I just want to look at the world where we are just looking at wanting the best for each other. And amazingly, when I'm in that mode, it is like a completely different world than the one we flip between. So there's like two worlds that we keep flipping in between. The one where we love people, uh, we trust people and we want the best for them. And then we flip between the other world, which is we don't love ourselves and therefore we don't care about others and we feel, you know, separated, fearful, alone, abandoned, uh, not worthy, not valuable, not living our truth, feeling forced to go to work, feeling forced to live a life that we don't want to live. Like it's just a, it's such a flip between two worlds. I oh, know there's, you know, like a gazillion different ways to look at this world, but there's these main two ways to look at the world and I feel like what the um, the New Age movement, the um, the conscious living uh, followers, the personal development people, whatever, they're trying to raise the consciousness where, where people are aware that the way that they feel about themselves and the way that they feel about others and what wanting the best for others and all that kind of stuff is and can have a ripple effect across all our lives, in daily lives, even, even that if, tiny little experience with um, wanting to drop off some stuff to Zane. Uh, that I promised to drop him off. Oh, it's so hot in here. Open the door. Yeah, even that tiny experience there would have been different because if that person had uh, seen me as a family member, as um, wanting to do the best for Zane and wanting to do the best for me and wanting to do the best for the school as well, you know, there would be a completely different um, way of interacting. But when you, and and even in my last job and all that kind of stuff, like if you if you're always seeking to improve upon and like accepting that everyone's different and appreciating and having more of that definition of love the love that i was talking about before the love of wanting the best for others and wanting to see other people fulfilled and wanting to see other people happy is not taking away the fact that you also want the same for yourself but by having that as part of your value system then it sort of reciprocates because you are not expecting anything from anyone else because expectation is kind of a forced a forced way of interacting you're basically saying like you know i i wish for these people happiness and fulfillment and and everybody to be able to be who they are and and express themselves authentically and each wanting the best for each other and that way you can you know harmonize with the opposing beliefs because you're not coming from a fact that a, a place of if somebody has a completely different belief than you then they must be wrong because then you're basically creating like this separation um, gap between that and causing there's no like it ever always goes this way it always goes away from and even if one person has that, like it's accepting, accepting of this person with the opposing view that's that's saying that that's wrong, it sort of explains how the collective consciousness works. Like if everybody is taking on this uh, fear-based belief and abandon and no self-love, no self-values, not giving themselves permission to be happy, not giving themselves permission to actually uh, speak freely about what they're thinking, even when I'm having conversations with people, at, you know, at the cafe or 
wherever it's like you're looking if you're looking to seek to help give them permission to go after their dreams and go after their goals and go after their values and and be happy and fulfilled and things like that if we were coming from that place of um, expansiveness instead of uh, making people small because the other the other thing that I've actually noticed also is that people who feel sorry for other people like the the victim comes out and then you've got all these people going oh you poor thing they're keeping them small they don't give them permission to shine they're saying oh you can't handle it you you poor thing you you're so um, little and small and helpless and and powerless and how do you become powerful from that thing if you're if you're not trusting in their own soul to be able to find the answers to be able to give themselves permission to expand and be who they came here to be in this in this world and it's it's really hard to um, that that duality that flipping between these two different mindsets of one is expansive and loving and um, light and freeing and and it allows so much more that we haven't been allowing before because it allows people to express those thoughts that have never been expressed before because they didn't think that society would be able to handle these thoughts but they're coming in with these new thoughts they're experiencing a new world compared to the world that we were born into and experiencing because everything's always changing and so they're seeing it in a different way and their um, opinions these these children their opinions are valid and they could actually be you know quite a lot more insightful and nicer which I'm, which I'm finding when I'm when I speak to children when I'm allowing them to you know not be a child but be a human you know a fellow human next to me another another soul that has a voice that is valid that has their opinions which are valid and by giving them permission to be able to speak what is on their mind and having that conversation it's like a way to teach the adults as well of a better world that they have planned you know while they're still dreaming while they're still hoping before the world tells them how small they are you know oh, I don't know a bit of a ramble I just wanted to get out while I was being told that they can't do anything <laughs> and I'm like yeah in my world when I'm queen <laughs> in my world we'd all help each other no not in your world and that's a school so they're teaching the kids that as well so and yeah, that was just a completely mindless dribble ramble, wasn't it? Still believe it though. Bye!